After testing the Ardu Rover autopilot system out on my autonomous box boat, I decided to build a more capable vehicle. Since the box boat had problems with the propellers getting tangled in weeds, I decided to make this version an airboat, which is a bit less efficient and more noisy, but hopefully more reliable. I designed these ship hull-like pontoons in SolidWorks and 3D printed them, each one in three sections. They're printed out of PLA from G-Tech. I then glued them together, sanded the outsides, and coated it in an epoxy for waterproofing. I actually had to come back later and do a second layer of epoxy because the first layer didn't cover up all the little gaps in the print and they were leaking water. I then added tubes to connect the pontoons and mounted a plastic storage container on top to house all the electronics. It's all powered off of two decrepit 9 amp hour 6L lipos in the pontoons. After spending some time on tuning, I got it working pretty well. It's able to run waypoint missions without wandering too much. It cruises at roughly 1 meter per second. I purposely made it slow to maximize the range, as the goal of this project is to do super long distance, long duration missions. Before attempting a long distance 13 kilometer waypoint mission, I did a few shorter test missions to verify everything was working. Here's the footage from those. But first, I'd like to thank Olight for sponsoring this video. They make awesome tactical flashlights that I actually used when I was filming this video. More on them later. Okay, here we go. Putting it into auto mode. I'm camped out here on this bench underneath this tree with my laptop ground station. And there's the boat. It's kind of a rainy day here in Seattle, but everything on the boat should be fully waterproof, so that's all right. The purpose of today's test is just to keep it in the water for like an hour or so and see if there's any leaks. Because last time I was having a lot of issues with water getting in. And I'm doing a waypoint mission that goes way out to the other side of the lake, so this should be pretty exciting. It definitely does not look like it's doing what it's supposed to. There's no waypoint over there. And I gotta go stop it before it goes into those trees. Okay, let's try this again. One more time. That doesn't give me very much confidence for whether or not it'll be able to make it all the way to the other side of the lake and back. Looks like it finished the waypoints that I set close to here, and now it's heading out to the far waypoint on the other side of the lake. Hopefully it doesn't screw up again. I'm using this trash can as a base station to get my antenna in a better position. It looks like the telemetry link is kind of starting to drop out a little bit, so we might be dark through the whole far side of the mission until it gets a little closer. It's way out there. Maybe I should have kept it a bit closer to home since I am doing a float test. Eh, it'll be fine. I should get a high gain directional antenna for this ground station. That thing is so far away. Holy cow. I just remembered I'm not totally in the dark here. I have the Pinpoint RC black box on board. It gives you the last uh, reported position via cellular connection, so that's nice. Woohoo! We have telemetry signal. That's great. It's like halfway home. Okay, it's back. What a relief. So it's going to go to a few waypoints out here in front of the dock back and forth so I can get some shots of it. And then it's supposed to drive itself right up onto the beach there. It looks like it's not able to turn right for some reason. I think maybe it got a piece of seaweed stuck on the front of the bow or something? I honestly don't know. Hmm, I might have to manually take control here. It's a good thing this happened now and not when it was on the other side of the lake. It's gonna run right into the dock unless it starts to turn. And it doesn't look like it's starting to turn. I'm gonna kill it. Go to manual mode. It's still not stopping. Stop, 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 stop. Don't do that. No, it's not stopping. Why? It's gonna go under the dock now. No. Oh, are the props gonna hit? Oh, uh, no. Looks like it's fine. Oh, geez. Oh, no. Oh, geez. Oh. Oh, there it goes. Doesn't look like there's any seaweed on it. I don't know what's. Oh, there is a big trailing piece of seaweed that's dragging behind. It's coming home. Stop. Stop. The motors don't stop when you tell it to stop. Oh, wow. Yeah, all that garbage was on it. That's a lot of drag. Okay, so why does that happen? Poor hull design on my part. The front of the hull is vertical, which was really dumb on my part. So in order to prevent it from doing that, I think I need to move the batteries so far back um, in the boat so that it rides with the tips of the hulls out of the water. I should try that. All right, now it's in full hulls out of the water wheelie mode. Looks like it won't have any seaweed problems now. I'll give it one more chance to return to home autonomously like it was supposed to. Now it's in return mode. Let's see what it does. It should just drive right up onto the beach there. So far, so good. Let's go see. Oh, 
right over that rock. I don't see any water yet. Let's see how this one is doing. That battery's dry too. That's excellent. So this thing is ready for a bigger mission. So I'm here at Lake Washington this morning and I installed a new telemetry radio. This is the RFD 900X and it should go way farther than that little eBay Pixhawk kit telemetry radio that I was using before. So I'm just gonna drive out that way and see how far I can go. There is a boat pulling a water skier over there so I gotta be careful to stay close to the shore. There's another good reason to stay close to the shore. So I just started the mission and it's going to the first waypoint. I've got my ultra dialed ground station here, RFD 900X holder. I should have this thing up in the air higher, but whatever. These RFD 900 radios are meant for use on aircraft and in the air they can go really far. But my question is how will they do as a surface radio? So, so far so good. We'll see how this works. That thing is so far away. I can just barely see it. It's about to make the first turn. Oh, there it goes. And it's about to make the second turn and then head home. There it is. All right, it's coming home. So on that mission, the farthest point from home was a little over 800 meters away. Here it comes. So that worked great. I think the next step is to come out here at like 3 a.m. or some ungodly hour when there's no boats on the lake and just go ridiculously far. So it's 4.30 in the morning. I'm here at this park on the other side of Lake Washington, and today's the big day. I'm gonna do what should be a 14 kilometer waypoint mission. So it looks like this should be a great morning for a big mission. It's really calm, the water's pretty smooth. Got a bunch of gooses over here. I'm gonna turn on the boat and make the waypoint mission. I've got the pontoon flaps closed, latched with rubber bands, and then I taped over the seams to make it more waterproof or splash proof. I have two extra batteries in it now. In addition to the big old 9 amp hour 6 cell packs, there are two new 4000 milliamp hour 6 cells. So that should give us plenty of runtime, I think. I think 13 kilometers is a long way. Okay, so this is what the waypoint mission looks like. Right now I'm over here in Kirkland at this little park. So I'm going to send it out, make sure it can uh, do waypoints and turn correctly. It'll go past downtown Kirkland and then kind of cross over the lake to the other side over here by the NOAA headquarters and the University of Washington. And then after that, it will continue up this long finger at the north end of Lake Washington, and I'll meet it at a park along the shore of the lake in Bothell. So it's a total distance of 12,837 meters. But anyways, yeah, this is uh, by far the biggest autonomous boat mission I've ever done. I added this emergency switch here so that if it washes up in someone's yard, they can uh, turn the motors off really easily. And I wrote some little notes on it saying, do not disturb, or if it washes up in your yard, call me. On the inside here, I've got the Pinpoint RC black box we'll be using to monitor it with via a cellular connection. Got some lights so no one runs into it in their boat. There it goes. Okay, there it goes. So it's in auto mode now. I'm gonna monitor it during these first few waypoints. See if it looks like it's working okay. And if it is, then I'll jump in the car and try and race it over to the shore of the park on the other side. All right, sweet. It seems to be working really well. So let's uh, hop in the car and race it over there. This is pretty exciting, but I'm also really nervous that something's gonna go really wrong. So it'll be interesting to say the least. It's obviously gonna lose telemetry connection when I get in the car and drive, but the failsafe is set to just keep going if that happens. One last shot of the boat. It's going, it's going pretty quickly. I'm crossing the 520 bridge right now that goes across to Lake Washington, and that means the little boat is out there somewhere. That's so cool. It's taken me about 20 minutes to drive to the other side of the lake, and I have a feeling the boat is gonna beat me to the park. Just got to the park. I'm heading down to the water. I don't see any autonomous boats so far. I got a signal a second ago. Oh, yep, I got a signal again. I, right now, I'm up here on this peninsula right here, and the boat has gone kind of up here towards downtown Kirkland, and now it's just turning to make its way across the lake 
um, and come to this peninsula. So I was wrong. I thought that the boat might beat me over here, but I beat it by quite a bit. This is going to be a long journey. This is perfect. I'm on this lifeguard chair here that's probably six feet off the ground. It gets the antennas up nice and high. So we're moving roughly one meter per second here, and this is a 13,000 meter journey. So that adds up to be an estimated trip time of about 3.6 hours. There it is. Wow. What is that? There it is, going along, slowly but surely. <laughs> so as I'm waiting for this boat to make its way across the lake, I'd like to thank Olight for sponsoring this video. Olight is actually the manufacturer of this headlamp that I'm currently using. I would highly recommend it. It's super bright, super durable. It can be used alone as a flashlight or you can strap it onto this headband and use it as an awesome headlamp. Olight also just came out with a new tactical flashlight, the M2R Pro. It puts out an amazing 1800 lumens and claims a 300 meter beam throw. It's so bright that if you accidentally turn it on in the carrying case it will start to burn the nylon, which is an indication that this thing has some serious power. Oh, oh wow. <laughs> smoking, boys. Holy shit. The M2R Pro also features a magnetic USB charge port and a magnetic remote switch, so it can be used on the front of a rifle if that's what you're into. On October 31st, there's a flash sale where you can get the M2R Pro for 42% off. See the link in the description for more info. So now I'm on my way to a park that's up north of here and hopefully I'll be able to pick up the boat's radio signal from there. So I just got to the second park and I have been using this Pinpoint RC black box to monitor the position, but now the position is not showing up. So that could either mean the black box lost cellular connection and it's not transmitting the position or it sank. But anyways, let's go plug in the laptop telemetry and see if we can pick up a signal. Found another one of these lifeguard chairs, which is awesome. I don't see it, so that's not a good sign. Oh, it's picking it up. Where is it? Let's see. Zoom in here. I think I'm right here. So that means the boat should be somewhere out there. I definitely don't see it. Oh yeah, there it is. It's just a lot further off of shore than I thought it would be. Now the big question is, how's my battery doing? Let's see. We're at 24.2 volts. It's lower than I would like it to be, but it looks like we're a little less than halfway through the mission here. So I guess that's actually not bad at all. Now I'm picking up the signal on the black box again as well, so that's reassuring. I have not seen a single other boat out on the lake this whole time. If I didn't make it clear, that's why I'm doing it so early to avoid collisions. So far on the journey up until this point, there's been quite a few parks and stuff like that along the shore for me to monitor from. But from here on out on this whole stretch up here, it's just all residential property lining the lake. So if something goes wrong, I don't really have a way to get to the boat or even a place to monitor it from. So I think what I'm going to have to do is just drive all the way up here to the end where I'm going to meet it and just hope I can get a radio signal from there. But I'm feeling pretty confident right now. We're doing okay on battery. We're at 24.1 volts and we're still doing 1.1-ish meters per second. So on our way to the final location, it's a 14 minute drive. There's a little hill here that overlooks the lake and I might just have a clear line of sight all the way to the boat. So. I'm going to plug in the telemetry radio to the computer and see if I can get a signal. Absolutely amazing. I'm getting a signal. Oh, uh, it's cutting out. It's a very intermittent signal, but I am getting a signal. Looks like we're almost halfway up the northern finger of the lake. The boat will probably reach the shore here in maybe an hour or so. This telemetry radio is fire. God damn. Based on my super rough Google Maps distance estimate, it's about 3.5 miles away and we're still picking up telemetry signal, which is incredible for a radio that's so close to the, <clears throat> to the surface. I thought this was just gonna be another disaster, but all is well. We are getting good reception from the Pinpoint RC black box. I definitely don't think we'd be able to see it yet, but. I'm going up on the sidewalk next to the road up there to see if I can get a better telemetry signal because it's higher up off the water. My biggest concern right now is that the little arrow boat indicator is not pointing towards me. It's kind of pointing towards the west or towards the shore. 
So that could be an indication that it's tangled in lake weed or something like that. But we'll see uh, which direction it looks like it's heading. It could just be like a compass variance or something. I don't know. I zoomed in and it looks like it's going in the right direction. It's just pointed in a strange way. So the black box is now reading two kilometers per hour. Previously it was reading three kilometers per hour, so it does look like the boat has slowed down a little bit. Also, Q ground control here is showing 0.7 meters per second, and it was at like 1.1 meters per second before, so it looks like it slowed down a little bit. That could be um, from like seaweed on the bow, that could be why the heading is off. Still not sure, but I guess we'll find out when it shows up if it shows up. Okay, this is really bad. It suddenly looks like it stopped and now it's going the wrong direction. Oh geez, it's actually going backwards. I'm gonna change the mode to hold so that it stops and then see if it keeps moving backwards. Yeah, no, it's just going in circles. Something's definitely wrong. So I switched from auto to hold mode multiple times to try and like start and stop the motors and see if it would free the seaweed or whatever is uh, binding it up and causing it to be stuck and nothing worked so i'm gonna hop in my car and drive over there and see if i can kind of manually control it with my spectrum radio i just drove over to this residential shoreline area and i see the boat there it is just drifting dead okay i'm gonna turn on my spectrum radio see if i can get a signal and try and manually drive this thing back. I think this is unlikely to work, but fingers crossed. I think it's sinking. Artificial horizon is showing that it's at a steep angle. This is really bad. Through a very fortunate series of events, I uh, managed to find myself a kayak, and it looks like I'm gonna get to the boat just in time before it sinks. Oh yeah, that thing is messed up. Oh geez, it's sinking quick. Oh wow, I'm so so lucky to find this kayak. Oh geez. This is amazing though. I can't believe it. So, okay, I gotta put that thing in the boat. <laughs> Whoever thought that I would be the one using the emergency motor stop switch. God damn, look at that. Even though I made an airboat, I still get seaweed around my prop. Oh, I can never win. Well, there we go, safe and sound. So I stopped on that residential road over there at the only lot that doesn't have a house built on it. The road just like gets too close to the lake for them to build a house. And I was parked there and this lady comes out and she's like, excuse me, you ran over my my wall or something and you can't park here. And I was like, oh, what a jerk. And But I was nice to her. I was like, oh, okay, I'll move. Sorry, I was just, I lost my model boat. And then, so I went and parked somewhere else and then I walked back to that lot and she saw me sitting on the ground with my laptop and my radio. And she came out and said, do you need to borrow a kayak? And I was like, oh my God. God, thank you so much. Oh, and now I have a kayak and my boat is safe. So lucky, this thing should be at the bottom of the lake. Thanks to that nice lady, it is saved. Yeah, you uh, you saved me. <laughs> That's excellent. Well, as I say, I realized that after I talked to you, I was like, oh, what is that? So as you saw, it looked like it was sinking pretty quick, but I don't actually know if it would completely sink because I had these pontoons um, packed full of foam. They are still pretty heavy with the batteries, but there was quite a bit of foam in there So I'm kind of thinking uh, it wouldn't have actually sank in. Now. I didn't actually test that So I'm not completely sure but yeah, there's still quite a bit of water in there So it looks like this pontoon either just started to leak which seems unlikely because in my last few tests It didn't leak at all or the boat hit a wave or something and water got in somehow that seems unlikely because I had this edge sealed with tape right here and the rest of it's pretty sealed up. So yeah, I really don't know what happened. It must've been a slow leak. That's the only thing that would make sense. And then once the boat started getting at an angle like that, it just uh, couldn't go straight. Maybe this prop was in the water. Oh, I bet that's what it was. When the boat was tilted back, this prop was in the water. So it uh, couldn't thrust the boat forward as well. So from the moment of the first lake weed incident where I first got uh, lake weed stuck on the front, I realized that this was a poor design. It would honestly probably work so much better if I just put all these electronics on a boogie board. So <laughs> these holes were just a serious waste of time. Um, but yeah, boogie board. Hmm, that's what I'll do.